So in this problem, we're told to get a flat uniform cylindrical satellite spinning at the correct rate. Engineers fire four tangential rockets as shown in this figure. If the satellite has mass 3,600 kilograms, a radius of four meters, and the rockets each add a mass of 250 kilograms, what is the required steady force of each rocket if the satellite is to reach 32 RPM in five minutes, starting from rest? So in order to solve uh, this problem, uh, the first thing, we're going to have to know a couple formulas. So the force formula, or the first formula you're going to need to know is the formula for torque. So we use tau to denote torque, and essentially torque is equal to the force times the radius. And so uh, keep in mind, right, we're going to be trying to solve for the force here, right, the force required. So if you divide both sides by r here, you'll get force equals torque divided by the radius, okay? And so notice, though, uh, we're trying to find the force of each of the rockets, okay? So we're trying to find the force of each of them. So we're going to calculate the total force here, right? We're looking at the total force, uh, but we're going to need to divide this value by 4 in order to get it for each of the rockets, right? So you can basically just divide f by 4, um, but I'm just going to divide this term by 4. And so the next thing you uh, need to know is the formula for torque. So torque equals I alpha, where alpha is the angular uh, acceleration and I is the inertia. Okay, and so we're looking at the inertia of this system right here. And so how do we find that? So uh, you need to know the formula for A, right? There's two things here. One is going to be this uh, spinning, right? The spinning cylinder here we can imagine as. So the formula for the inertia or the moment of inertia of a spinning cylinder like this, if you look in your textbook, you'll see a table um, that shows them, but essentially it's equal to one half mr squared, right? So mass times the radius squared. Uh, and then we also have to include the moment of inertia for the rockets too. So uh, the formula for the moment of inertia of a point mass, which we're just going to assume the rockets are, is equal to mr squared. So if we want to find the total inertia, it would be one half m r squared plus, and then keep in mind uppercase m I'm going to use to denote the mass of the whole thing versus the rockets is going to be lowercase m plus, and then there's four rockets. So it would be four m r squared. So you're adding up the a moment of inertia of the cylinder here, and then your, or the satellite, and then the four rockets. So now you've got your i. So what you can do now is rewrite this, uh, rewrite this. So I'm going to factor out an r squared and then the half. So r squared divided by 2, and then you would just have m plus uh, 8m. So keep in mind, 8 times 2 is 4. So that's where you get that, 4m, and then you have the r squared. So all I did was just factor out the r squared and a half, and that gives me this. Uh, and then now that we have the moment of inertia, what we can do is plug it in, right? We know the torque is now r squared. Uh, divided by 2m plus 8m multiplied by alpha, right? Torque equals i alpha. We just solve for i. And then now we can plug in the torque into our original formula. So uh, you will have r squared uh, times m plus 8m times a. And then you're dividing by 2 times 4r, right? The 2 comes from this formula. And then your r is coming from up there, if you can see that. So 2 times 4 is just 8, so we have 8r right here. And so now this is where a cool trick uh, actually to solve this problem comes from. So what we can actually do is, or sorry, this is force, not torque. This is my bad. This is the force, right? Because we plugged in the torque over, it should be, right, 4r, yeah. And so the, the trick for this is we're trying to find the force uh, based on to get it to some rate. So... We're basically trying to find the force required to get it to reach 32 RPM, so our angular velocity, 32 RPM, in some amount of time, which is five minutes, I believe, yeah. And so what we can do here is find, okay, well, we know the force equals this. And what we can do is replace our ac uh, acceleration for uh, omega in time, or sorry, yeah, omega in time. And... Uh, Right, omega is our angular velocity. And uh, the way we do that is you should know angular, this is supposed to be alpha, not a, sorry about that, because this is angular acceleration. 
Um, and yeah, so the formula for angular acceleration is the change in the angular velocity over the change in time. So if we just replace this, right, rewriting it, if I go ahead and replace this with omega, and then this would still be, and then notice these r's are going to cancel here, so uh, this would basically go away. Right, you're just dividing r squared by r, so you basically just minus 1, and then you get r. So this would just be gone. Uh, and then it would be 8 times t. And so all we have to do is just plug in our uh, specific, right, instead of plugging in the angular acceleration, right, which we could find by just, right, because we know we have to speed up to this speed from 0 in uh, this amount of time, right? It's kind of like kinematics. So omega equals omega 0 plus alpha times t. But notice omega is just 0. So this is omega equals alpha t, and then you would just divide by t. So that's how I'm able to replace this alpha here with these uh, variables. I mean, you could easily just plug it into, but it's just easier to see it this way. Uh, but when we do this, we need to make sure it's in the correct units. So omega does have to be in radians per second. Uh, and then obviously the time has to be in seconds. It can't be in um, minutes. So when we replace this alpha here, uh, we have to, uh, we're going to replace it with omega over t, but they have to be in the correct units. So hopefully you understand that, right? Omega equals omega 0 plus alpha times t. It's just like v equals uh, v sub 0 plus a times t, right? Just this basic kinematic formula. Uh, but we're just replacing it with uh, rotational kinematics. And then all we got to do is solve for the alpha, right? Because this is just the acceleration or the angular acceleration times, uh, right, the inertia, right? To get the torque and then the torque we just plugged in. So hopefully that makes sense. All we're doing is replacing it with these two variables. Because we could just solve for it as easily, but it's just easier to plug it in. So 32 RPM is the same as 32 revolutions per minute. Uh, and then to convert this into ra uh, radians per second, you need to know one revolution is 2 pi radians. So that gives us radians now. And then obviously one minute is 60 seconds. So that gets rid of your minutes. And it just leaves us with radians per second. So you have 32 times 2 times pi. Uh, and then you would divide by uh, 60. And that'll give you 3.351, we'll say. Yeah, 3.351 radians per second, right? Radians per second. So now we have the omega. So we have, uh, right, we can plug that in a second. Uh, and then the time, obviously, is, well, we have five minutes. There's 60 seconds per minute, so 300 seconds is uh, that value. So just going to plug it in now. So our radius here, they tell us, is 4 meters. Uh, as I said before, M was the mass of the uh, big satellite, which is 3,600 kg, plus 8 times the uh, mass of each rocket, which was 250, times omega, which is 3.351. Uh, dividing by 8 times the time, which was 300. So plugging all this in, let me go ahead and do it. So 3,600 plus 8 times 250, right, times 4 times 3.351 divided by 8 times 300. You're going to get about 30, yeah, 31.3, 31.276, which is equal to 31.3 newtons. But yeah, so keep in mind, since we did divide by 4 in the beginning, this is the force for each of the rockets. If you didn't divide by 4, you would just get, obviously, 4 times this value. Uh, and then to get each of the rockets, you would just divide by 4. So uh, hopefully that makes sense. But just a quick rundown is we knew torque equals force times radius. So we wanted the force. So if we could find the torque, uh, we could get... Uh, the force, right? Because we know the radius is just uh, 4 meters. Uh, we divided by 4 in the beginning just to split it up for each rocket. I know torque equals I alpha. Uh, and then I know I is just each of these, right? So we took the moment of inertia about the satellite and then for each of the rockets, added them up. And then in order to solve for the alpha, you could have just done it like a separate kinematics problem, right? So omega equals omega 0 plus alpha times t. So if I was like, okay, well, what is the angular acceleration throughout this interval, well, I know we got to get to 30, all right, I would have it in um, radians per second when I solve this, though, but keep in mind, 
So whatever it was in radians per second, it was 3.351. So 3.351 equals 0 plus uh, 300 times A. So A would just be this divided by 300. Uh, and then, yeah, so then I would have the alpha. But what we did was we just replaced it with uh, omega divided by T. And honestly, thinking about it, that probably made it a bit more complicated. Uh, it would have just been easier to plug in the alpha, but uh, hopefully it makes sense either way. Um, but yeah, so uh, this is going to be your answer, and hopefully you found this video useful.